Hi guys, Adam here. In this video, I'm going to show you some workarounds for not having the max ifs and min ifs formulae. So you can still get the maximum of something if other things are true, and you can still get the minimum of something if other things are true also, or with conditions. <coughs> in my previous video, or in, in, in a different video, I went over getting a unique, unique list of things, which we're going to use to get athlete names. Because these athlete names are listed multiple times, let's go quickly over this data set. So what we have is we have athlete names. We have the team that they're on, the good guys or the bad guys. We have a date, and there are multiple dates. And we have an event. It's either a game or a practice. And we have a peak speed. And this speed is in kilometers per hour, and it is the maximum speed that the athlete reached from a GPS unit or something like that um, during this event. Now. What if we want to know the first of all the maximum peak speed in overall for each athlete, and then what if we want to know the maximum speed, maximum peak speed in games, and the maximum peak speed in practices? And then maybe the maximum date or the latest date that they achieved a speed greater than ninety percent of their overall peak speed. These are a lot of questions, um, and we can answer them all with the same formula, more or less. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a unique list of athlete names. I'm going to do it in the way that is a little bit in older Excel versions. You can do it quickly using a unique formula, but we're going to do it using an index formula. So I'm going to go equals index. What do I want? I want the athlete names. I'm going to select them all here. It'll say table one, athlete name. When I have them all selected, comma, match, open parenthesis, zero, comma, count if, open parenthesis, and I'm going to click on this, this cell here. And I'm going to do a colon, and it's going to go to the cell here again, or make sure that it says that. And in one of these numbers here, it doesn't matter which one. I'm going to do the first one, dollar sign before the H, dollar sign before the 2. So count if that, comma, now the criteria is the athlete name again. And instead of selecting everything, I'm going to type it in because we could do that because we have a table here. I'm going to type in table 1. It says, okay, I know I'm looking at your table. It's all highlighted in purple. <clears throat> I'm going to do an open square bracket. Now it's saying, what do you want from this table? Well, I want the athlete name. I could type it in or I can click on it. And I'm going to close the square bracket. I'm going to close the parenthesis for count if formula. And I'm going to do a comma, zero, because I want an exact match of the athlete name. And then I'm going to close off the parentheses there. And you'll know that you're done when you see a black parenthesis, which is the same one that the formula starts with. I'm going to click I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and click Enter. If you're on a Mac, you need to hold down Command, Shift, and click Enter. If I just click Enter, I mean, for me, I have a different version, so it'll work. For you, it probably won't. And this is an indication that I did not do it right. An indication that I did, and I'm going to do it now, is if I hold down Control, Shift, and Enter, or you might hold down Command, Shift, and Enter if you're on a Mac, you'll see squiggly brackets on either side of the formula. That's how you know that you did it right. And now I'm going to drag this down, or we're going to get errors, and then I'll correct for them. Okay, here are all my athletes, a unique list of my athletes, and I have errors. You can get rid of that error by, before going through the index, we can type in if error, open parenthesis. Now we're telling Excel, if there's an error with anything going on in here, comma, now we tell it what we want it to show. I could say I want it to show no data and then close the quote, and then if I close the parenthesis and do what I did before to enter in the formula, like we need to do, hold down Control, Shift, and Enter, and I drag it down, we're going to see no data show up a bunch of times, but I don't want that either. I just want it to be blank, and the way that we can do that is we can remove the text in there and just have two quotes, and I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and Enter again. I see the squiggly brackets on either side, and I'm going to drag it down. Now I have all my athletes. And let's just check by clicking on athlete name. One, two, three, four, five, six athletes. 
Even though they're listed multiple times in this table, we have a unique list here. So now, how do we get their peak speed? First, I'm going to do it with max ifs. And but then from, for the remainder of this, I'm going to not do it with max ifs. Okay, so equals max ifs. The whole purpose of this, of this video is if you don't have max ifs or min ifs formulae, I want the peak speed. I want the maximum peak speed if something is true. If the athlete name in this table is equal to this athlete name here. So I'm going to do max ifs, table one, type in table one, open square bracket, peak speed. I want the maximum peak speed in this table, comma, with the criteria range of this athlete name. So I'm going to say table one, open square bracket, athlete name, comma. Now what's my criteria? Well, the athlete name has to be equal to whatever this athlete name is. Okay, I'm going to close the parentheses and click enter. And I'm going to drag this down here. Now I should have the peak speed for each of these athletes. And we can check that very briefly. I'm only going to check two of them. So I'm going to filter this list down to Captain America. Remember, it's 34.4 because this will hide other things in the table. Okay, 34.4, 34, 31.6, 34, 33. All right, we got his peak speed. Let's try someone else now. Iron Man, 31.5. So let's select Iron Man. 29.6, 31.5, 31.3. That is his peak speed. Okay, we did that. Great. That's, that's a pretty easy thing to do. But now what if we don't have max ifs? We kind of have to flip things around a little bit, okay? So let's pretend we don't have this. Let's remove this data. Or you know what, let's just do it next to it for now and then I'll remove it. Peak speed. Now if we don't have max ifs, what we can do is we can do equals max, open a parenthesis, that's what, what numbers you want the maximum of. But before I do that, I'm gonna write an if statement. So I want the maximum number of what I'm going to look for if, you know, table, table one, athlete name equals this athlete name right here, comma. So if that's true, if this athlete name in this table equals this, this athlete name here, then I want the maximum of their table one square bracket peak speed, close the square bracket, close two parentheses off, and I'm going to hold down control, shift, and enter again. And if you're on a Mac, command, shift, and enter, you'll need to do to make this work. Some PCs may differ between whether or not you need this, but and that's kind of changing over time. If it doesn't work, hold down control, shift, and enter, or command, shift, and enter when you enter in the formula, and it should work. So I'm going to hold down control, shift, and enter, I know that I did that right because oops, because I see the curly brackets on, on either side, and I'm going to drag this down, and the numbers line up exactly with the max ifs formula. Okay, Let's remove this. We don't need the max ifs anymore. We're done with that. But now, okay, great. We got the peak speeds. Now, what if we just want the peak speeds during games? Well, all we have to do really is add in another if statement here. The easiest way to do this, instead of doing it from scratch, it would just be to copy this formula and paste it here. And now it's looking at a different athlete name. Okay, so now I'm saying I want the max um, peak speed for the athletes in this table if the name is equal to this cell. That's not what I want. I want this cell to be H3. And just so we don't have to do this again when we copy and paste the formula again, what we can do is we can lock in this column, put a dollar sign before the H. That means that if I copy and paste this formula, the column is not going to change. So I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and Enter. And we just did the same thing that we did here. There's no change, except for a little dollar sign there. But this isn't what we want. We want the max or the peak speed or the maximum peak speed for whoever this is only during games. Okay, so we need to add one more if statement here. So not only do we want the peak speed for this athlete,
But now we also want, comma, if table one, open square bracket, event, that's the name of our column, it's selected in purple there, equals, so there are two ways to do this, I'll, we'll do them both, equals quote game, and then end the quote, it's telling me I only want it in the event that says game, and then I have to add one more parenthesis on the end here to close it off, I'm going to hold down control, shift, and click enter. Now notice, this is the same as this peak speed, and but Captain America's peak speed is in a game. Now, let me drag this down. Let's see someone who's different. Iron Man is not the same as he was as his normal peak speed, so let's look at that. His peak speed in game should be 29.6, but his peak speed overall, overall should be 31.5. So I'm going to select Iron Man from this table. 29.6, game. 25.4, game. 29.6 is his max speed during games. But we noticed 31.5 is higher than 29.6, but that occurred during a practice. Maybe if we do the practices, we'll see something there. So let's unfilter that. And now I'll show you the other way to do this, which instead of typing in game here, if you have a cell somewhere that says game and it's always going to say game, then you can just point to that cell. There's just a different way of doing it. So now instead of table event equal game in quotes, we're going to have it equal this cell. And I'm going to lock it in with dollar signs. And another way to do this, I think it differs between PC types. Um, but I think for me, if I hold down the function key or FN and I click F2 or F4, sorry, then it automatically kind of adds dollar signs in, in an order. But this is, it, it differs depending on your PC type. Um, that's just a quicker way to do it, but I'm adding dollar signs to that now, just backtracking. So now we want the athlete name, um, that's equal to this cell and we want the, event that's equal to whatever's in this cell for the peak speed. I'm going to hold down control, shift, and enter, and I'm going to drag it down, and I have no peak speeds, or they all say zero. That makes sense because this does not say anything in here, in this column. Now, if I change this to game, now I have the peak speed for games. And actually, we don't even have to do the practices if we want this to be a dynamic field because maybe I just... I want one column, let's just even remove that practices column, and I want this to be whatever I type in here. Or I, I could create a drop-down menu and have a selector here if I wanted to. But if I type in practice now, all these numbers changed because now we're showing the peak speeds in the event that is equal to whatever this says. And if I type in nothing, we're not going to have anything. So let's just keep that as is so I don't have to do another one and bore you more. So now we have the peak speed in practices uh, or games, whatever we select. And now the final thing, I'm going to move this over. What if we want to know the, essentially we're going to be using maximum formulae to get this. What if we want to get the max, the maximum date or the latest date for each of these people that they reached greater than 90% of their overall peak speed? So we already have the peak speed here. And what we can do is we can do, let's just do it from scratch. So do equals max, and this is the same format that we've been using. If, so if what is true, if table one, open square bracket, athlete name, is equal to whatever this name is, that's our first if, and also comma, if table one, peak speed, open square bracket peak speed is greater than this number, whatever that is, multiplied by 0.9. Now, if both of those things are true, comma, we want the maximum of table one, open square bracket, eight. 
and we're going to do a couple parentheses, three of them, until the black one shows up. And we're going to hold down Control, Shift, and Enter. And we're going to drag this down. Now, notice Captain America, his, his peak speed, uh, or his last time his peak speed was greater than 90%, was on this date, 424-2020. That is his peak. What if we make this zero? Well, now it's 423. And what if we make 423, I don't know, a lower number, maybe something like 23 for Captain America? Now it's 422. So notice, I'm just going to all undo those. Now we have a latest date, and everyone kind of is within 10% of their, or 90% of their maximum there um, on, on 424 or 422. But now let's take this one step further. Notice I have a percent toggle here. What if we say, you know, instead of typing in the, the percent of peak speed that we want to use, we want to adjust that. Then I can remove that 0.9, just like we've been referring to cells kind of throughout this thing with the games and practices. I'm going to click on this here, and I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to click Enter. Now I'm going to drag it. Oh, sorry. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and click Enter. So I see the squiggly brackets. And I'm going to drag this down. Notice nothing changes. Actually, let me do this again. Let me paste, let me copy this, paste it here. And I'm going to change A3 to K3 to I3 because that's the cell that I want to look at. And I'm going to change the name to H3 because that's the cell I want to look at for the name. Now I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, Enter. But now I'm going to change this L1 to 0.9. Okay, so now what I'm saying is that I want to get the peaks or the maximum date where peak speed in this table for each person was greater than 90% of their overall peak speed. Hold down Control Shift Enter. I'm going to drag this down. Now things are the same, but in one of them we traded L1 for 0.9. Now we can play around with this threshold. So what if I say, you know what, instead of 90% of their peak speed, I want to see the last time that they got greater than 95% of their peak speed. If I type in 0.95 in here, we got to change. So now we have the ability to adjust the percentage of the max uh, of the percent of max peak speed that, that we see. Maybe I, all right, what about 99%, 0.99? Oh, we still have it. The speeds, I guess, are pretty close. And now, so now that we have 99% selected here, Captain America, his peak speed was on 34, or was on this date. And if we go to 100%, it probably won't show a date. Yeah, it's going to give a, or we could make this be an error. But the reason why this is, is because we use this greater than sign. Now, if we do greater than or equal to, for example, and we change that, and I hold down Control Shift Enter. Now we're just going to get the date <laughs> that they reached their peak speed. So we just did two different things, um, and we can adjust all of that or by this this button here. If we use greater than or equal to, and then if we, you know, for example, Captain America, his peak speed was 34.4 on 424. If we make this 10, now it's a different date. And if we go to 50% maybe of his of his max peak, peak speed, the latest date that he achieved that, again, we get some more changes, maybe 0.2% or 20%. Now everyone, um, the latest time that they achieved greater than 20% of their maximum peak speed was on this day, even if it is that low. Um, yeah, so I hope that that video helps. Uh, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions. It's pretty dynamic stuff.